Let's go first with you, Brent. Let's pontificate a little bit. Let's get on our soapbox and talk about the future. Sure. I mean, just two, the, two the, items the, I want people to think about is, is location and orientation-based uh, enhanced virtual reality interaction with the model. So basically, as you're walking through, uh, you know, phones and, and GPSs and things might have to evolve a little bit. But as you're walking through for the model to know where you are within the model and that you can basically, through your VR goggles, be looking at what's really there and what should be there. And uh, and catch things a bit quicker on, uh, for example, rough ins that are that are out of position. Uh, another thing that I was thinking about was using the, the 3D printing aspect to make uh, uh, models of of some enhanced uh, structural connections, and then you can make a, a negative mold off the 3D print, and then you can basically cast the uh, the connection. Maybe we might have new alloys or synthetic materials to work with, but basically cast some connections that would be strong material efficient and, and really uh, beautifully aesthetic. The architects would, would love it, I think. And the structural engineers would be okay with it. That's great. Okay, well, we, the, the big topics are on digital twins and flat pack prefab, um, kind of smart devices, sensors on site, connecting to models. These kind of things are pretty futuristic, but it's coming soon. How about uh, to you, Tyler? We talked a little bit about robotic total stations and that kind of stuff. Why don't you pontificate for a little bit about the future? What, what do you want to happen or what do you think is gonna happen? In the next, you know, ten years. Well, I mean, I think uh, you know, I think we, us as leaders in our in our industry, we need to get uh, we need to get behind this. Uh, all the people coming out of engineering school, all the people that are entrepreneurs coming up through the industry, uh, are all tooled uh, and uh, programmed to deal with the digital world. Uh, so uh, they're going to demand that that this technology is available. Uh, in one or more ways. Uh, one of them might be that they won't come work for good companies like ours because uh, we're behind the times. So I think we'll attract the, the, the best and the brightest of the industry if you stay current. And, and like I said, not all the technologies need to be used. Uh, some of them uh, are not relevant to, to different types of, the biz of our business. Uh, but uh, we need to be uh, open-minded and we need to look this stuff up and at least if we don't understand it ourselves at least put our people in front of it so that they can get uh, get immersed in it that's great okay last but not uh, certainly not least richard I, I know you've messaged with me lots of times about you know different sources of, of innovation and what's happening let's say in, in switzerland and some of these types of places for advanced robotics at least we had lots of good discussions how about you what, what do you think the future looks like yeah the way i look at this is uh I'm pretty excited about the moment we're currently in. It's, I, I feel like we're on the cusp of breaking free from the lack of productivity improvements we've seen in the construction industry over the several decades. And, and uh, if we think about some of the relevant factors at play, so we've got skilled labor shortages, which will drive more reliance on technology. We've got tighter infill sites that require careful coordination. As Brent mentioned, we're seeing a shift to offsite construction, which really demands earlier engagement and, and therefore better digital technology to construct offsite concurrent with excavation and, and structure. And, and then there's a, a desire to eliminate process waste, as Andrew says in the comments, uh, and incorporate lean construction techniques into the process. As Tyler mentioned, there's this demographic shift underway. Gen Z employees are gonna be demanding increasingly more advanced technology to do their jobs. And the smart employers are gonna be the ones that uh, have it there to attract this scarce talent. And, and then combined with, you think about all the recent advances that are going on in, in the tech space right now, from internet connectivity to artificial intelligence to virtual reality, as Brent said, the augmented reality, big data, internet of things, 3D laser surveys, robotics, drones, 5G, and the quantum computing, I sound like an ad now, um, are converging really to provide increasingly more accessible and powerful tools. So we got lots of demand for the tools and we've got the tools coming and, and if they're not here already. And, and I, I can't even imagine, I'm not probably the right guy to imagine how to pull all those together, but I think there's lots of bright minds working on that already. And, and we're gonna start to see more and more of that utilized in the near future. And, but maybe the takeaway is in order to take advantage of these, we've got to shift the effort curve up front. And also we need leadership, right? It, there's a question in the comments about full team buy-in. We're not gonna get it. The full teams aren't gonna buy in. But it takes somebody with strong leadership to buy in and to show show it how it's done and and yeah maybe the takeaway this could all be boiled down to a simple saying which 
a carpenter told me once, which is measure twice, cut once. You're on mute, uh, Howie. Oh, the most popular statement of 2020, you're on mute. Um, I fell for my own trick here. Okay, so that, that was a great way to wrap it up.